What's up guys, it's your boy Wild Gaming coming at y'all with a video, updated Holy Paladin video. So what we're going to do is do a three part video today. We're going to talk about the Holy Paladin, the Protection Paladin, and we're going to talk about the Retribution Paladin. They're going to have timestamps below where you guys can go and click whatever section y'all want to go to. We're going to talk about the stats, the builds, the rotations. As far as retrib Retribution goes, you know, there's couple ways you use your talents so we'll get to that when we get to that but right now let's talk about this holy build so the basic build that you want to run for any mythic plus raid environment you want to go crusaders might dps increase with your holy shock you can use it basically to heal you can use it to dps also judgment of light basically is a free heal so it's one extra one less button you have to press you know, if you want, if you use Besto of Fate, then you want to go with Savior of Light and Beacon of Virtual. You want to use them three talents together because they all synchronize with one another. If you use Beacon of Fate and you pop Beacon of Virtual, when this expires and heals the tank or whoever you put it on, it's going to heal the other two targets that it's on also. Also, if you pop Beacon of Virtual and your raids start getting low, this can pop on everybody who has a beacon on them, which includes the whole group just about... So these three talents, this talent, this talent, and this talent synchronize as well together. So if you run Bristol of Fate, make sure you run Savior of Light and uh, Beacon of Virtual. And normally I run Beacon of Virtual, you know, if we have like uh, Grievous or uh, Bursting, you know, those situations there. Normally I run those, but normally I will run this build right here. And this is my uh, Haste build. So you want to go with Blind and Light because it's actually help your tank, for example if you got raging going on for example and your tank is getting chased by the dogs for example uh you can pop this here in halls of anointment you can pop uh blind and light blind the mob give your tank a chance to recuperate or kite away whichever and you know so it's a little better than fist of justice so that's i like that better than fist of justice uh you can go i go with uh you can go with rule of law if you're planning a raid and everybody scattered i will use rule of law because it increases your mastery by 50 percent for 10 seconds when you use it which increases your lighter dawn distance where you can heal with lighter dawn and it actually gives you a uh, mastery a more benefit of having mastery um cavalier is good also like if you're doing plague fall you're on the last boss and you gotta dodge those tentacles like cavalier is good for that because you have two giddy ups so it's pretty good besides your bubble that you can bubble so it's capital comes in handy too depending what you're doing unbreakable spirit is a real good talent also even though we used to be able to use divine purpose on on other players but now it's a solo use so the way i use divine purpose now as a holy paladin is i take and put a uh, blessing of sacrifice on my tank when i know he's about to take damage and i put um divine protection on myself so that way I'm decreasing his damage but also decreasing the direct damage that's being directed to me, to me from the, uh, the what, what I'm putting on him. Alright, give me one second to turn this volume now. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. And um, I use Divine Purpose because Divine Purpose is basically the best talent on this role. But if you're doing, for example, if you're doing Bursting, uh, some uh, grievous or something like that and you really need you know burst heals then you can use holy avenger holy avenger is actually a good talent but it's situational when you use it and when not to use it so i would use this only if you need like burst healing so uh, if you like low levels and you know you start now with your paladin and you're under geared and you're running mythic pluses you know and you're, you're running with an under gear group then you can use holy avengers on a three minute cooldown so if you think about it uh, mythic plus you know normally take you 20 25 minutes so if you think about it you know you got a three minute cooldown so you basically get to use it around five times per dungeon but basically every boss you'll have it up for every boss pretty much uh surfing i don't use it i tried it i don't like it because it got a, it has a 45 second cooldown on the last 50, 15 seconds so it's basically it's a 45 second cooldown after it expires so you have 45 seconds before you can use that but between those 45 seconds there's no telling how many divine purposes that you will get the proc for you while you in between 
you know, that uh, cool down that you're waiting on with surfing. Uh, so that's row 40, row, row 45 row. I run Awakening. I don't use uh, Avenging Crusade because I don't feel like it's, it's, I feel like it's the weakest talent on the row. Uh, Awakening is a real good talent. I love this talent because every time you use Water Glory or Light of Dawn, you have a chance to proc this, and it procs pretty good. So you may use Water Glory maybe three full times, and it may proc. So you get free wings basically for 10 seconds. So you're talking about a, a one of our most powerful cooldowns. You're getting it free. All right, you can go with Sanctify Wrath, which increases your uh, Holy Shot cooldown, decreases it by 40%. So... It lets you cast it faster, but if you if you look at the 25% longer, so if you look at the cooldown, let me get the wings. Uh, so if you look at Avenger Crusade, right? Avenger Crusade is 20 seconds. So if you use this, if you use uh, Sanctifying Wrath, it just adds five seconds to it. Those five seconds might sound like five seconds is five seconds, but to be honest with you, if somebody gonna die in five seconds, they dead already. So, to me, you know, Sanctifying Wrath is a good talent also, but it, I feel like Awakening gives more beneficial to Awakening than um, Sanctifying Wrath. I would use Sanctifying Wrath if I was doing PvP. If I was doing PvP, then I would run Sanctifying Wrath, I would run Bestow of Fate, and I also will run uh, Save, Save by the Light for PvP reasons. I will use those. Uh, and I probably also will use Holy Avenger because you could pop that for PvP and you have... You know, you can hold a shock and dog and hit a hit a person with a shield of the righteous. That thing actually hits real hard too, by the way. But it it, it gives you a burst to where you can actually burst somebody down. Um, for your 50 row, if you're going with a haste build, <clears throat> you want to go with a uh, glimmer of light uh, because glimmer of light, <clears throat> excuse me, glimmer of light stacks with haste. So the more haste you have, the more Holy Shock you get off, the more refresh you get on your Glimmer of Light, the more Holy Shock cooldown, decrease the Holy Shock cooldown, which the more haste you have, which in return, go ahead and um, gives you a higher uptime on your you know, Glimmer of Light. Beacon of, best, uh, Beacon of Faith is actually not a bad talent either, so I like to play with this, just to play around with it. So what I do is, I beacon the tank, and I just beacon whoever take damage, and I just heal somebody else. And it heals both of those people also. But it only re it reduces the heals by 30%. But, you know, it's still healing three targets. Versus when you use this here, you know, you use Beacon of Fate. I mean, Beacon of Virtual. This is this is our AOE heal talent right here. If you pop this and use Light of Dawn, it actually feels to me like it double heals. So it heals initially and it heals through the Beacon. So this is this is a real good talent also. All right. So for the stats, this is basically none of this is gonna change even with 9.1. Nothing's changing with the Holy Paladin. You know, the last change they made to us was they increased our uh, Holy Shock mana by 300. So it increased the mana cost by 300, and which it didn't seem like much, but when you highly DPSing and healing and DPSing and healing and, and just chain pulling, you will run out of mana. So you have to be careful of how much you uh, use your Holy Shock because you will run out. That 300 actually matters. I didn't think it mattered at first until I actually used it a lot and we chain pulled through dungeons and it actually made a huge difference because I was actually running low on mana. Um, for as far as stats goes, you know, if you like I said, if you run Glimmer Light, you want to stack haste. All right, there's no cap on haste. For a Holy Paladin, there, there is no cap on haste so you want to get around what i would do is soft hit around maybe 26 percent and start stacking versatility and mastery i wouldn't stack critical strike because crit is one of our weakest stats unless you're running um if you're running this legendary right here the inflorescent of the sun well then you want to stack mastery and crit the reason why is because every time you get an infusion proc you get two two charges of infusion so that means when you when you hold a shot and you get a proc you get a proc on your um infusion of light you get two low cast holy shot holy lights or flash of lights so um that's what you want to stack crit 
if you're using that legendary but the best legendary we have is shark bearer shark bearer is by far the best legendary so if you actually look at this chart right here shock barrier did 411k of my healing so if you you know you can't go wrong with this basically uh, for trinkets you just want to use whatever you you know anything that has haste so the best thing to do is form me some pvp trinkets and i also do have the uh the trinket the haste trinket right here i actually have the unbounded uh chingling I actually have this trinket, but I don't like it because it's a random proc versus a straight raw stat. You got a raw stat that you use <clears throat> 8 to 6 haste, which is a raw stat. And when you use the trinket, it gives you 156 intellect. So you, you can't go wrong with that because you're getting a raw stat straight out. And when you use this with your wings, which I pair it with my ring wings, or I pair it with my divine toll because it has a <clears throat> it has a one minute cooldown so when you think about it in reality this has a one minute cooldown so it actually works well with uh divine toll the other trinket that i use is this pvp one here which is a good trinket too it gives you 88 haste and it procs and gives you 135 intellect <clears throat> and the good thing about this trinket is you can use it for retribution if you stack in haste as a retribution paladin also. So nothing's changing with the holy paladin in 9.1. So I wouldn't too much worry. Just keep doing what you're doing. You know, form your legendaries if you want. You know, and just keep it keep it moving until the next expansion come out. Because nothing's changing with the paladin, period. So we should we set the goal. The only changes they got coming is to mages, warlocks, jurists, uh, Pretty much those are the classes that they're nerfing. And they're messing with Shadow Priests a bit. So Paladins are pretty much in the same place where they've been. And we, nothing's going to change with them. So let's move on to the uh, Retribution side. Or let's go to the Protection Paladin side. We're going to get into the Protection Paladin. Alright. So basically... For protection, you want to go. Master, it seems like <clears throat> a lot of people tell me go haste, haste, haste. So, if you want to go haste, you can, you know, just swap out your trinkets. Basically, <clears throat> the best trinkets that I found is this animal field because when you stand in it, it's, it gives you basically 275 haste and it procs a lot. So you have a high chance. This this actually procs pretty decent. I didn't really think it procs, but I always wonder. And I use this this here. I use this haste trinket with my wings. Whenever I proc my wings, I use this haste trinket. So you can stack basically haste with your uh with your with your tank. All right, let me change these legs. All right, the legendary that I use for Mythic Plus is basically the Bulwark of the Righteous Fury. The reason why I use this because if you read it, it says Avenger, Avenger Shield increases the damage of your next Shield of the Righteous by 30% for each target hit by Avenger Shield stacks up to five times and increases its radius by six yards. <clears throat> so, in reality, this increases the range of your Shield of the Righteous by six yards, which gives you more AoE distance, but it's in a frontal cone though. So whenever you do use it, it's in a frontal cone. So you have to make sure you're facing your targets when you use it. Otherwise, you will hit half of the mob. You want to have the mob in front of you and back up a little bit, then pop it. So the way I the way I use this, this is I use Shield of Righteous, Shield of the Righteous, Hammers. I use my Hammers of the Righteous. Use my um, Judgment first. Then Shield of the Righteous. Then drop my um, Consecration. And then just... Every time this come off cooldown, I just try to use this every time it come off cooldown, but I try to save it. I use this up and then try to hit this once and just try to stack this at least two to three times before I use it again. But if it's prioritized, use Shield of the Righteous when you need it, man. Like, don't try to hold on to it just to build five of the five uh, Bulwark of the Righteous to make it legendary. It don't matter if you use it once or twice. You still going to get the, the, the uh, buff from it. 
which is going to increase your damage. So it's not like a damage reduction ability. It's a damage increase ability. So it's going to help you out in um, Mythic Plus. As far as the stats go, man, like, like I say, you can run a high haste. Or you can run a high mastery. You can run versatility. You know, pretty much it's up to you. But what I do with my uh, mat with my paladin is I try to run a decent amount of haste. But I like I like to feel mastery. I think mastery, to me, mastery feel and um, versatility just feels stronger to me than haste. The reason being is because in Mythic Plus you can drop your consecration, and you're basically standing in it regardless anyway. So you're getting the buff from it at all times to increase the damage and the block. So you're getting this buff. Versatility is a raw damage, raw damage reduction, raw healing uh, stat. So these two stats right here go hand in hand. So they're pretty decent together. Uh, as far as the enchant goes, the enchant that I use is, let me find my weapon. The enchant that I use, I use Celestial Guidance on some. But like if you, if you take a lot of damage, then you want to make sure that you use the, uh, where is it? Let me find it. Hang on. Well, I don't, I don't see it in here, but. All right, hold on. Baron of versatility. I think I put it on one of my other weapons. But anyway, it's the it's the basically the enchant that you use is when whenever you take whenever you get healed, it heal you for ten percent more healing. So you take ten percent more healing when you healed. Um, as far as the talent build go, I run Holy Shield, and the reason why I run Holy Shield is because you can't you can't go wrong with a 15 percent block chance to block spells because it's, it's basically the only ability we have if you're not using uh blessing of the spell warden that can block spells and it has a 15 percent chance to block spells and it's automatically so it's not a button that you press like this button here you have to click uh, holy avenger is it actually heals for a lot so you wouldn't realize how much this actually heals for when you actually excuse me when you tank it so blessed hammer is another good talent if you want to it's a high holy power generator so if you want to generate holy power fast then use blessed hammer so if you run a haste build run haste build bless hammer uh first avenger blind and light you know you can use spell warden or you can use unbreakable spirit i use spell warden because sometimes i throw it on one of my members if they're taking a lot of damage but if you want to go pure defender you know you want to go Unbreakable Spirit, uh, Divine Purpose, or you could go with uh, Holy Avenger if you want to burst something down. Like Holy Avenger is always used just to burst something. So you can shoot it, you can drop a hammer, boom. You can drop a hammer and you can uh, shield of the righteous. Drop, um, shoot a shield, shield of the righteous. Hit a hammer, shield of the righteous. Hit a hammer, shield of the righteous. Justice, shield of the righteous. So you can actually get a lot out of this talent. And it's a good talent too if you're about to die and you want to keep your group alive. You can do the exact same thing. You can drop a hammer. You can heal. You can water glory somebody. You can shoot a shield, water glory somebody. Hammer, drop, uh, hit a hammer, water glory somebody. So, and it's pretty. It's a pretty strong talent. Uh, water glory is already a strong heal when used on someone else anyway. So, sometimes this is a good talent if your healer is struggling. This is a good talent. But overall, you'll get more healing out of this then you will out of this more use shall i say um consecration ground i use this like this week is necrotic so this is a good week to use uh consecrated ground because it actually slows your target so it gives you a chance to kite out of that kind out of way of damage another good talent to use with this i use sanctified wrath for the aoe and the extra long wings and to generate the free holy power but uh, Shield of the Protect, Righteous of the Protect is another good talent because every time you use uh, a Holy Power, like it reduces the cooldown of your of your um, defensives. So this is real. This is a real good talent. I use this a lot, especially when I know the dungeon. It's a, it's a hard week like this week, because this week here is gonna be a rough week. We got Tyrannical, we got Bolstering, we got Necrotic. So this week right here is gonna be rough. So with this week, what I would do is run this this bit this the build I would run this week right here.
this is what I will run this week. And um, Blessing of Spell Warden. I could use Blessing of Spell Warden to actually remove um, remove the debuff off of me. Whenever I get an, uh, stacks of Necrotic, I can use this to get it off. I can macro. I got a macro for my bubble, which is right here. Where it's a cancellation macro. So when I use it, it actually cancels out the um, the bubble. If you guys want to see what that macro looks like, I'll let you uh, see what it looks like. All right. That's basically cast Divine Shield, cancel Aura Divine Shield. That's the macro right there I use to, cancel, to pop it and cancel it. All you do is press it, and it does them both. So... That's basically it for that. Uh, that's basically it for the build, you know. And what I so protection patterns are not changing, so they're gonna stay. The problem with protection is outside of Shield of the Righteous, they take a lot of damage, but they're one of the most versatile tanks in the game because you have, basically, you have a lot. You have a lot of cooldown. You have wings, for example. All right, you have Divine Toll, which is another. You shoot that out there. You got three holy. You got three holy power right then and there. Boom, pop. You can heal yourself. A full holy power. You can heal yourself right then and there, if need be. Uh, you can pop guardian of the ancient kings when you know big damage coming. It takes 50 50 percent of that damage for eight seconds. You reduces it. Then you come right back. You got another the uh you got another cooldown to use, which gives you a 20 seconds. And when you take and um uh, I know I didn't talk about this in the last section but i'm gonna go back over it but uh this is this is my that's my prop my retribution one i didn't change it but this is what i run my uh conduits i'll get to this in a second after we talk about the builds but um so that's that's basically how i feel about the uh, protection paladin it's just basically you know it's a it's a tank that you can't make mistakes as you will die so you have to know what you're doing. Like people think protection paladins are easy to play. They're fun to play. They're easy to play if you know how to play with them. But if you don't know how to use your cooldowns right and avoid damage and know when to use your shield of the righteous at the right times, you know, you will you will die. So that's about it for the protection paladin video. So now we're gonna actually dig into the retribution paladin video. And retribution has been the same, you know, well, it changed recently because right before launch. They uh, hang on. Let me change this gear. Okay, so right before launch, they changed uh, the way retribution works. So, what they did with retribution was they nerfed execution sentence and they nerfed uh, final reckoning. The way they was working together because it was hitting so hard. And PvP, you basically was able to generate three holy power, pop wings, throw a uh, execution sentence, final reckoning on top of their head, and by the time that hit them, man, they dead. They dead as a doorknob. Like it was literally a one shot mechanic. Um, so what I run for retribution is I run zeal, cause zeal and uh effort in a power is my AOE rotation. So what I do is I run zeal because it actually increases your melee attacks which is auto so your auto attacks is actually one of your third or second most highest damage abilities when you actually playing retribution uh, so what i do is i run zeal i run effort of power i run fist of justice uh depends it depends if my tank need help if you need help i run blind and like just to blind a mob if they interrupt their casters or whatever so it's pretty good this is a pretty good mythic plus talent uh repentance i will only use repentance if it's um inspiring then i will use repentance because you you can CC the Inspire ad and just kill everything else and then kill him after. Uh, eye for an eye is a PvP talent. So I don't really too much touch this unless it's been PvP. Uh, or you can use Cavalier if you need to chase something down. Unbreakable Spirit, I don't find as useful as for, for Retribution. Uh, Divine Purpose is actually... I like Divine Purpose. The recommended build for Kirin uh, Paladins is Execution Sentence, Blade of Justice, Surfing, and Final Reckoning. And the reason why they have those to where those work together the way they do is because Divine Toll. If you prop the Wings, Final Reckoning, 
and then hit somebody with divine toll or a trinket first then divine toll man that that thing hurts and then you hit them with execution sentence man you you can down there hit somebody for 20 30 k easily so uh in pvp you can use those talents and pve this is a this is actually a single target build so i wouldn't use this build for aoe wise this is a single target build uh for aoe you want to run like this for aoe you can run saint Fine wrath too because saint Fine wrath actually when you pop it it does 494 damage to every enemy in a circle around you so you're getting 494 free damage when you pop wings and it lasts 25 percent longer so that's on top of you know if you get a proc from divine purpose and you use divine storm on top of inferent of power which crusader strike gives you a 15 percent chance to get a free one so if you get a free one and you drop this on top of their head you're talking about a 50 percent increase of damage with a 25 percent additional damage you're talking about 75 percent additional damage to a ability that already does 2400 damage up to five enemies so like that that's that's a real hard hitting ability and if you go with divine purpose just say for example if you get you pop final reckoning wings on top of a divine purpose proc that's 20 percent damage increase so that's it makes your aoe hit like a train so for aoe you know what you want to what you want to do when you go into an aoe build uh i should get to some targets let me see something Wild well, Hearthstone, we're going to just discuss the state of wreck. So, basically, whenever we was transferring over to this expansion, you know, everybody was complaining about Retribution, that it was a too strong of a class because of the abilities that they had. You know, the way the way Execution Sentence was, was synchronizing with the rest of the build, which was true. Because it, it was hitting hard, bro. Like, man, when you hit somebody with uh, Divine Toll... Well, not Divine Toll. When you hit somebody with Final Reckoning, Execution Sentence, and Wings, man, they was dead. So. So, basically, what you want to do when you AOE in, uh, you want to come, come over here. You basically want to go pop Wings, go in here. You want to uh, ask your Wakes. Then you want to... Alright, then you divine toll. Then you four. Alright. Just like this. This is this is everything you want to do right here. But if you notice, like uh, let me back up. So basically, let me change this. So just in a couple, just a couple seconds, you know, you you do two. I could have did more damage if I had drew Final Awakening down. I'm, I'm gonna do it again. But um, so basically, what you want to do is you want to go in, you want to Ash Awake, boom. Once you Ash Awake, you already got wings. So you pop wings, Ash Awake. You want to uh, throw down Final Reckoning, then Divine Storm. Then you want to pop Blade of Justice, hit your uh, Judgment, hit your uh, Crusader Strike, then Divine Storm. So you can basically you get two divine storm procs out of that one um one thingy. So you want to go in here. All right, is it all refresh? My my wings not refreshed, but it doesn't matter. So you want to go. You want to drop. Ash awake. Divine storm. Divine toll. Divine storm. Divine storm. Divine storm. Judgment. Crusader strike. Crusader strike. Divine storm. Back off with no wings you know that's 198k damage in a couple seconds so and the more the, the more the mob the more damage you'll do with buffs or whatnot but that's pretty much basically what you want to do when you go into into a mob you want to pop wings drop final reckoning ash awakes divine storm blade of justice judgment crusader strike divine storm you might get a free proc divine storm you know and make sure you use shield of vengeance if you're in a mob because that that shield actually when it expires and people are actually banging you up that shield does a lot of aoe damage also but the state of ret man retribution retribution is pretty decent uh as a build it's pretty it's a pretty good solid build i love it so for your single target 
you know, you want to go. All right. You want to go Blade of Justice. Okay. So your single target is a little bit different. You want to go, when you do this one, you want to pop wings. Like pop wings, drop final reckoning, divine storm, then uh, temper verdict, ash awake, temper verdict, uh, blade of justice, judgment, temper verdict, crusader strike, crusader strike, judgment, temper verdict, and when you get a free proc, just use your free proc. So it's basically look like this: go in, crusader strike, judgment. I mean uh, ash awake, blade of justice, judgment, crusader strike. Don't forget to use your hammer, judgment, blade of justice, strike, single target, single, all right. And I didn't even use a uh, blade of justice. So basically retribution is, is still, you know, to me, it's still a, a actually a fusible uh, spec. And a lot of people say it's not fusible, but to me it's fusible. I like it. You just got to know basically how to play it. And I don't know why uh, Final Reckon it didn't drop because I actually pressed a button, but it just didn't drop. So, but it is what it is. Ain't no big deal. But that's the state of, uh, that's the build that I run for, you know, this is my basic single target build. Uh, this is my AOE build. So, but single target, you want to run um, Surfing. Because Surfing actually was Surfing, Blade, uh, Execution Stance. Uh, blade or blade of wrath surfing and final reckoning yes that's the three talents you want to run together whenever you using uh why am i still in combat whenever you using single target people say surfing is still good even in aoe situations which i can see why i understand because it gives you basically eight percent of everything except mastery 13 percent. so it increases all your stats so you can't go wrong with that but that's my uh, Paladin updated guy, man. I know I messed up a little bit on the retribution because I was basically trying to talk, focus, and, you know, give you guys feedback at the same exact time. So, you know, I hope you guys understand and don't chew me up in the comments, you know, because I messed, I messed up the rotation a bit, you know. But that was that's about it, man. So let's try this rotation again. One more time for the go. All right. Right, let's get this AOE roller. Alright. You just gotta remember to use your hammer too. Cause I don't I don't technically just use it like talking about it. But there you go, 408k DPS. Couple seconds. So it's, it's this that's my build everybody else will tell you to use something different but this is this is what i use and it works fine for me i don't use surfing because i like to have a free proc when i need it because i can heal myself with it too and it actually gives you a damage ability this 45 second cooldown just seems pretty steep for me so but i like divine purpose but if you want to blow something up if you use execution sentence blade of wrath uh surfing and find a record it all together you'll blow some you'll blow something out the water but you know man i hope you guys like the video man like comment subscribe because us youtubers you know even new youtubers like me you know it takes a lot going into these videos to try to make some good content for you guys man if y'all could smash that like button for me you know subscribe it don't really cost nothing you know but it actually helps me gets me motivated and you know want to make more videos you know i could do more videos on paladin i play a mage also so i can make some fire videos some frost videos some arcane videos on top of my paladin videos but anyway y'all guys have a nice day you know stay blessed stay safe it's your boy wild game and i'm out till the next time see you guys